In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Shopify app proxies when you're working with Gadget so you can make secure requests from your storefront to your Gadget backend. Let's get started. Okay, let's set up a Shopify app proxy in Gadget. I'm just going to use this proxy to make secure requests from my Shopify storefront. It's going to be a Shopify theme app extension to my Gadget backend. I'm going to call a Gadget action. Just gonna create my new gadget app at gadget.new. I'm gonna select Shopify app, custom works for me. Let's continue and I'll give my app a name, my app proxy example. And when I create my app, Gadget is gonna spin up all the infrastructure I need to build my full stack Shopify app. First thing I'm gonna do is connect to Shopify. Now I'm just gonna build a simple banner app. To show how the app proxy works. If you actually want to build a banner, there are better ways to do it. Use Shopify meta fields, use your theme block settings that a merchant can configure. Don't make a request to the back end. I'm just going to be serving a static string. So better ways to build a banner. This is just going to show off how to do the app proxy setup. I do want to connect Shopify. I can use the assistant to connect if I give it details about my application. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to manually connect. So I'll choose a different method here, go through my Riley test stuff organization. I don't need a production app. I'm just going to create a development app for this example, my app proxy example, and Gadget will create an app in the Shopify dev dashboard for me. I'm just going to select my read theme scope, but you should select whatever API scopes and data models are needed to power your app. And I'll press confirm here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install on a development store that was created through my dev dashboard. Gadget's gonna handle all of Shopify's OAuth for me so I can just install right away. And what I should see is my Remix front end here. Yep, this is indeed my Remix front end. I'm not going to touch my front ends anymore. I'm mostly just going to be focusing on my gadget backend. So that's going to be my serverless node backend. I am connected to Shopify, so, so that's great. So let's go just go back to my file explorer here. First thing I'm going to do is just spin up an action that I can call from my storefront. So I'm going to go ahead, create a global action. Just call it my, no, I'll call it get banner. So there we go. We've created a new get banner action. I've got all of the things I need. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to return a simple hard-coded payload. This is my banner. How exciting. So I'm just going to print this string to in my storefront. It's not going to be a very wild app. I do want to show off with our built-in logger a couple things you get when you make proxy requests in Gadget. So I'm just gonna print out my shop ID and my current shop ID is available through my connections object when I'm making proxy requests. I'm gonna get some proxy information. So once again, connections.shopify.currentapproxy, show off what kind of information is there when we get to our log statement. And finally, I'm gonna show off the access or print out the access control role. And this is available through my session. So my session is available as a parameter here. And if I just go session.get, and this will be roles. And I can add a little message here, logging proxy request. Perfect. So this is gonna print some information to the logger and return a hard-coded string. When I call this action, I'm gonna call this action through my app proxy. So. That's all the setup I'm gonna do on the gadget side. It's time to finally set up my app proxy. No, I'm a liar. There's one thing I need to do. Spoiler alert, the role that we're gonna print out is gonna be unauthenticated because when you make requests from the storefront, shoppers are anyone, they haven't necessarily logged in. Requests coming in are going to be unauthenticated. So if I go to access control, click permissions, I need to give unauthenticated users, which is gonna be my shoppers, my buyers, permission to call get banner. Uh, the Shopify app users role are the merchants interacting with your app in the admin. Now, the one exception to this is if you've enabled customer authentication here in Gadget, let's say you're building a customer account extension, for example, 
logged in users or logged in shoppers on your storefront will be granted. We'll have an extra Shopify customer role here. They'll be granted that role instead. So you get an access control that isn't unauthenticated if you've enabled that. Uh, check out our documentation for more information. We'll also touch on that a little bit when we get to printing out the proxy information in our logger. Let's move on. Let's actually set up our app proxy now. So I've set up everything I need to call my action from my storefront. I just need to set up my proxy in my TOML file. So if I go to my Shopify app development, TOML development, because this is my development environment, I need to fill in this app proxy information. So I'm just gonna replace my app name with my app proxy example dash dash development because for my development environment uh, and then i need to provide a sub path and an apps prefix the sub path can be anything mine's just going to be gadget banner tutorial but if you want to change that you can uh, the prefix should be app. Uh, if you want more information on this app proxy definition in your tom file check out shopify's documentation so now i need to go ahead and use the built-in terminal to actually deploy this proxy configuration to the app in my dev dashboard. So if I just go yarn Shopify, it's using the Shopify CLI built in here. Deploy and development. Development is my current environment. If I run that, it's gonna select my development TOML and go ahead and deploy that. And once this is deployed, we'll take a peek at the deployment in our dev dashboard or in my dev dashboard. I do wanna release a new version, but we are adding app proxy configuration. It's also updating my webhook configuration. What that is, is just adding these compliance topics. So it's not important for custom apps, but for public apps, we're gonna go ahead and automatically subscribe uh, to these GDPR webhooks for you. Uh, this is just pushing that configuration to your app. We include it in your TOML, but you need to deploy those changes. So the deployment is done. Let's take a peek at our dev dashboard. And we have my app proxy example, we see we have another release and we've got the proxy configuration as well as our compliance webhooks. That's what else was pushed. If I take a peek at my uh, previous deployment here, you'll notice no compliance webhooks, no app proxy information. So that is what changed. That's what we pushed in this deployment. So that's great. We've deployed this proxy to our app. Now we just need to go ahead and make a request from the storefront to our action using the proxy. So I'm ready to go ahead and create a theme app extension. I'm gonna use GGT to pull my gadget project down locally. You can't use this built-in terminal to generate extensions right now. GGT is our CLI tool. While it's running, any changes you make here in the web editor will be synced to your local machine and vice versa. This enables you to use your local IDE if you want, your local tooling. It also enables source control, which is very handy. So I'm just gonna copy this command. I've already installed GGT on my machine. And I'm gonna run it here. And we should see, you see it is pulling all these files down. I'll just create a new tab, my app proxy example. And see if I list the files, I've got my access control API, my package JSON, my web folder, all my files are down here. Now I can go ahead and generate my extension. So if I just go Shopify app generate extension, this is using my locally installed Shopify CLI. I can choose my theme app extension, select the default name. And you see it was added here locally. And because GGT is still running in this tab, you can see here it's pushing these extension files up and it is here available in my web editor. I'm just gonna keep using my web editor for now. I am gonna go ahead and create a new file here, banner.liquid. And this is where I am going to build my theme extension. Now I'm just gonna copy paste some code in because it's not doing a lot, but there is a bunch of typing required. So a little quicker. First line, I am installing my apps API client here in this theme extension on the storefront. I'm just gonna replace app name with my app proxy example dash. Once again, my development environment my client will now be installed on the storefront. Now we need to initialize this client. Uh, I'm adding a DOM content loaded event listener. 
and I just need to go ahead and replace this with a Pascal case version of my app name, my app proxy. Example client. And this is gonna initialize my client to window banner tutorial API. I am setting a browser session for this shop ID. And then the important part for the app proxy is defining this endpoint. Uh, this is gonna be my apps prefix and then my subpath. Once again, my subpath is just gadget banner tutorial, but it can be whatever you want it to be. If I just flip back to my Toml file here, it's gonna match the subpath and prefix I have defined here, which will match the subpath and prefix I have deployed to my app. All these things need to line up, and now I can go ahead and make requests through this proxy to my gadget API. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just calling my get banner action, and then I'm getting that return payload, which remember, it's just a body and a hard-coded string, and I am going to insert it into this span. So my extension itself, not particularly exciting, uh, but now I can go ahead and use this API client to make requests through that proxy. And when you make requests using proxies and gadget, we're gonna handle HMAC validation for you, so you don't need to worry about that at all. I can just call my actions like I would using my API client in, in the API playground or another action or from the gadget storefront if you're not using hooks. It's as simple as this. If you have a JavaScript asset file, you can also use, you know, that. that is why I'm saving it to the window. So if I did have a separate asset file, I could use window dot whatever I call my API client to call my actions as well. So we're good to go. Let, let's test this out. Misclick, don't need to do that. I just need to go ahead and run my dev server. So if I go just yarn Shopify dev, I could also run this locally if I wanted. But what this will do is start up a dev server, push my theme app extension to my dev store, and then I can test it out. We can take a peek in the front end. I think I'll need to select my store again here. Yeah, I do. Uh, mine is test with sample data. And once I get the thumbs up from the CLI, I'll flip back over to my, oh, I need a password. If you don't know where your store password is, you go to your store here, click on online store and click on preferences. It'll be right there. Not gonna go to it because it is right there. It's very obvious to see, but it is right there. And once this is done, I'll be going into my theme editor and just dropping this app block in so we can take a peek. And once again, it's gonna be a hard-coded string. Not particularly exciting, but it will use the proxy and then we'll take a peek at our logs. Okay, we are ready. Let's take a look. If I go into my theme editor, I got a little app section already, so I'll just add a block for my tutorial banner. This is my banner, how exciting. There we go, this is our app. We're done, we're making a request through our proxy. We're using our gadget action to populate this banner dynamically, unnecessarily dynamically in this case, but dynamically nonetheless. And if I go back to my gadget app, I can take a peek at my logs here, filter by my events. And this is the proxy request we are logging. So we do have this proxy information. We have the prefix being used, remember it's prefix and subpath. This is where if you are using that customer authentication and you have a logged in customer in the storefront, this will be the ID of the Shopify customer record in gadgets. So you can go ahead, make sure to apply proper tenancy data access for that customer. So that's super handy. Unauthenticated role, once again, if it's a customer, it will be the customer role. And then I'm printing out my shop ID. So that's how you can go ahead and use Shopify app proxies in Gadget to make secure requests from your storefront to your Gadget backend and serve up dynamic data to your Shopify storefronts. If you have any questions about anything I ran through here, uh, we do have documentation on Shopify app proxies. These tutorial steps are all written out as well. Uh, you can also hop in our developer Discord. We're always happy to answer questions. Links for all of those things are going to be in the video description. Until next time, I hope you keep building more and coding less with Gadget.